Hello CJ, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we feel really lucky to be talking to you about your new production, Geek the Musical, which is written by Scott Morgan. Can you tell us a bit about how you became involved with the show and how things have moved on since? Well, I got chatting to Scott a couple of years ago actually when I was doing pantomime in Clacton and he lives quite close by. Uh, we just got chatting, I knew he was a composer and had written a few things. And he mentioned Geek to me back then, but nothing really came of it. And I went to a rehearsed reading of the musical about ten months ago because he'd mentioned he wanted people to come along and read it because he was interested in staging it. He'd done a couple of sort of amdram stagings in Essex but wanted to take it to the next level. I went along originally to read for a very small role just to help out, but when I got there he asked me to read for the role of Ms Axel the English teacher, and I had such a good time and enjoyed it so much, I thought, this is actually something I'd like to get involved with, like to take further. So we had a few chats, a few discussions, and we decided to try and make it work together. So I took on the role of producer, um, a big step for me, I'd never produced anything before in my life, but I thought, this is the sort of thing I'd love to do. I mean, I can't direct, I can't choreograph, but I can perform, and I can produce, I can, I can organise. So I thought, well, this falls within my limited skill set, so I'll have a go at doing this. So Scott as composer did a little bit of rewriting, I came in as producer. We decided to start looking around for venues, did some a uh, couple of workshops, and here we are. So in April and May in 2013, we'll be staging Geek, a new musical at the Tristan Bates Theatre in the Actors Centre, in the heart of London's Theatreland, and really looking forward to it, and only a tiny bit of terror. <laughs> Well, it's really exciting because we all love new British musicals and there are very few quality ones around. Um, and so can you tell us a bit about the storyline of, of Geek, a new musical? Well, the whole idea with Geek was, as Scott calls it, it's an anti-musical. You look at the genres of Glee, Grease, High School Musical, all that kind of stuff, and this completely turns them on the head. Geek A New Musical is very much a tongue-in-cheek spoof of all the sort of stuff you've seen a hundred times before. It's not an adult's show, but you certainly wouldn't want to take young kids along to it. Um, it features uh, the character Plain Jane, who joins uh, Sarah Michelle Geller High High School, and as the new student she's bullied, picked on by the popular clique, um, but eventually comes through to win the hearts and minds of everyone else and becomes a bit of a bitch herself. But there are a lot of very strange characters. You've got all the jocks, you've got all the nerds, the popular kids, um, the two teachers who are, shall we say, very disinterested in the students um, and anything else apart from furthering their own careers. Um, a couple of grotesque characters, but a lot of laughs. Um, some incredible songs. I mean, the opening songs to each act are fantastic. Those are the songs you're going to be humming when you're leaving the theatre. But a few jokes which are very near the knuckle, a few little scenes which will have you squirming in your seats. But I think it's because it's so funny, because it's so original, fresh and dramatic, a lot of people are going to want to see this and a lot of people are going to want to be talking about it. It sounds very exciting. I personally can't wait to see it. I'll be along. Uh, I know that you are doing open auditions yeah. for the casting mm -hmm. of Geek, a new musical. Can you tell us your idea behind doing the open auditions and just tell us a bit about the creative team and how everyone got involved and, and, and who's doing what? As a theatre professional, somebody who has done the endless rounds of auditions, performances, disappointments, everything, I, to some degree, get a little bit disappointed when in a lot of the Western shows you see the same faces regurgitated for anything. Now don't get me wrong, these are incredibly talented people and they deserve it by right. But you can't help thinking that a lot of the time people just pass between shows and just go along the whole conveyor belt, five or six West End leads in a row. And you just get to see the same old faces. Some of them are absolutely brilliant actors, brilliant singers. But in the spirit of nurturing new talent, and because I know exactly what it's like, I wanted to hold open auditions for Geek. Simply because we wanted to give new people a chance, new people, even if just the experience of coming along to audition for a full professional show. 
and I'm determined that at least one of the roles in Geek and New Musical will go to somebody who has never had any sort of professional experience, ideally someone who hasn't even got an agent, just to give someone a great credit and a first step up. Because, as everyone will say to you, musical theatre especially has such a high unemployment rate and has such a high rate of people who will never get a full professional job. Getting your foot in the door is the most difficult thing, so I'm determined in Geek News Musical at least one person will have that chance. It's so encouraging to hear somebody uh, working on a new musical having that attitude towards the business. It's, it's amazing. Can you tell us what you're looking for in this new talent? What we want is somebody who isn't afraid. We have got a product here which is very raw in some places. It's not going to be somebody for the somebody who's faint-hearted who's going to be taking this on. But if you're determined, if you're willing to put in the work, and yes, of course, if you have talent, then I think this could be a very rewarding experience. Um, because most of the cast are high school students, it's going to be somebody who's young, probably somebody who is either still at or just very recently graduated from drama school. So if these people want to come forward and apply, at least one of them will get a job, and this will be a job in a professional musical in the heart of London's West End. I brought my own crew on board for this. I've got um, a very good director who's brought in another director with him who I knew, um, a choreographer who I've worked with recently, um, a set designer. We've actually got one of Britain's top costume designers doing the costume for the whole production. So I've got an incredible team around me for this. So anybody who's coming in and joins the cast will be around the very best level professionals. And I think that's an absolutely invaluable experience that you can have. You put that on your CV and people will look at that, people will be impressed and people will take notice of you. Going back to your role as producer of the show, uh, can you tell us what you've relished most about your new uh, kind of career direction as a producer and what challenges you've enjoyed the most? When I decided to become producer of Geek and New Musical, I was, to be honest, very apprehensive. I didn't know if I could do it. Um, because I'm utterly inexperienced at this, I wasn't sure what I had to do and the best way around it. But one thing I've discovered in the last couple of years is people in London theatre especially are so selfless, so willing to help, and just so much of a family really. I mean, everyone's in direct competition, of course they are, but everyone is willing to help other people, give advice and just chat to you, and that's so refreshing and so lovely. Um, the Producer has three main tasks. One is to assemble the crew. Two is to make sure the production goes ahead, sorting out venues, sorting out all the logistics. And the third and most important and by far the most difficult is to find the money. I think I've managed to do all three quite successfully on this one, so fingers crossed. We're, we're all booked into the theatre, the deposit's paid, the set's being built, so hopefully we're well on the way. Um, but it was very scary because you never know how things are going to pan out, you never know if you're going to be able to find the money and actually the most tr difficult thing on this project was finding the venue. Um, we applied to a lot of London theatres and well, surprisingly few of them actually even bothered to reply when I got in touch I've got a new musical here, I'd like to come in and hire your space. Um, but a few did and the Tristan Bates, which is so central and one of the best small venues in London, came back to me immediately and said, actually we've got a slot, and it was the perfect timing for us. A lot of places could offer us something in June or maybe in August, but because of where we were down the timeline with the project, we thought we could get in earlier. And the Tristan Bates said, look, end of April into May. So absolutely perfect for us, gives us a full four weeks of rehearsals, which is should be more than enough time. Um, then the last big um, challenge for me was to try and make sure I could get people through the door and get some bums on seats. My name in the role of Ms. Axel would probably attract a few people, but not too many. Um, but I've been very lucky in that I've managed to uh, persuade Ewan McIntosh, who's best known as Big Keith from The Office, to come and take the role of Principal Walker, who is um, the other male adult teacher. And he's coming in and I think that's going to get a lot of people coming in for interest, one to hear you and sing, 
uh, two to see him in a comedy musical like this, and I will tell you now, if you want to come along and see what it is, there's a very big twist at the end for Ewan's character. Mm, well, I will certainly be along. Which uh, This actually leads us uh, really nicely into our next question, because you are not only producing the musical, you are starring in the musical as the very interesting <laughs> role of Ms. Axel. Can you tell us a bit about your character and what we can expect from her? Is that right? Her? her yes, she's a, she's a lady. <laughs> uh, Ms. Axel is the English teacher. She is, not to put too fine a point on it, an alcoholic nymphomaniac bitch. <laughs> um, she has a few interesting scenes, a, a lovely solo song called All the Education You Need, and I'll leave it to your imagination where that one's going. <laughs> um, a couple of uh, nice little um, scenes interacting with students and especially Principal Walker, and then there's a lovely scene where she falls out of a cupboard with a load of dildos. Right, well, I'm sure we'll all be along. <laughs> if, if you weren't thinking of coming along then, you certainly will be now, everybody out there listening. <laughs> um, now, during the show's run, there is, you're running a charity night and a party for the Mad Trust charity on May the 1st. Yep. How important is it to you to support charities, and why in particular the Mad Trust? I have been very lucky in my life. Um, I fell into a career which wouldn't have even existed a couple of years earlier and from that developed um, something with public profile and actually was able to do a few things I wanted to. I gave all that up to follow my dream of being in the theatre, but because I have been so lucky I do work, probably I spend more time doing my charity work than my theatre work at the moment. I'm involved with a lot of charities, um, a lot of children's charities, human rights, equality charities, but one of the causes that is most important to me is um, HIV and long-term illness care. Now when I um, moved to London a couple of years ago, I became involved with Mad Trust and found out about them through events like uh, West End Eurovision and became involved with them and did a little bit of work for them and then last November I took it upon myself to do something of a physical challenge and in the middle of the night all by myself I ran from Brighton to London, a 56 mile run Whoa. just accompanied by one solitary cyclist and unfortunately it happened to be the night of the heaviest rainstorm of the year so for uh, six and a half of the eight hours, 18 minutes it took me, I was running in interactively torrential weather because oh. it was such an important cause for me, it was worth the effort to keep going, so I battled through. But now working for Mad Trust is something that's very important to me. So I'll be attending some of their events this year, but because I wanted to host a charity night, and yes, you can argue, well, why are you doing it? Because it's it's money that's not going in your pocket. Well, yes, all right, I'm losing a whole night of house takings, but there are things that are more important. There are a lot of actors who have become ill through no fault of their own, for various causes, and they need looking after. And Mad Trust will look after anybody in the theatre business, uh, has different divisions, dance mad, theatre mad, and because of those, and because of the work it does, it's worth that to give up one night just to help people and raise awareness. And I think, as performers, that's the most important thing we can do. Well, you seem like an incredibly dedicated, uh, focused, and extremely caring um, member of the biz that we call show. And it's, it's so lovely to meet someone that, that has all of those elements, who is moving over from stage work into producing as well. Mm. Uh, I'm sure everybody out there is going to be really encouraged to, to, to hear you speak uh, today. So thank you very much. Uh, Geek, a new musical, is on at the Tristan Bates Theatre from April the 22nd to May the 18th. Why should we all come along to see Geek, a new musical? It is going to be absolutely hilarious. Um, one of the problems is when you're reading a script, you never know how it's actually going to translate onto the stage with the songs, with the characters, and with all the interactions. A lot of people say, oh, we had so much fun making this, and a lot of the times, when, especially when it refers to films, you know, if people had fun making it, that never translates onto the screen, and you're actually watching something that's really boring. We've had three workshops now for Geek, and a rehearsed reading. And even though the performance, with all the songs and the interval, take about two hours, five, two hours, ten minutes, 
The read-throughs have taken four hours because everyone's just been falling over laughing. The script is absolutely hilarious. The songs are incredible. I mean, I find myself just humming them when I'm at the gym, and I don't even know them well enough to do that. <laughs> but this is going to be a fantastic show. It's going to be a brand new musical hitting the West End. People should come to see it to support new nurturing theatre. But if you want a good night out, you want a good laugh, and you want a fantastic evening, there's not going to be a dry seat in the house after it, so please come along and see Geek and New Musical. Well, I shall certainly be there. I'm sure everyone that sees this will be along. Um, just finally, just to wrap up, uh, have you got any words for those people who have supported your career and followed you? A lot of people have been very kind to support me through my career. Um, I've managed to talk to a lot of them through the wonder that is Twitter. Um, a lot of people have had some very kind words to me and just been so kind to me over the years. Because of that, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been so kind to me. I wouldn't have got where I am today without it. I wouldn't have had the courage to pack in the TV and that was a huge step for me. I gave up a lifestyle, I gave up money and I gave up a, quite a solid career to move into something where I had a very small chance of success. But because of the support, because of the love, and because of the determination that gave me, hopefully I'm making a go of it. So I just want to say thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today, CJ. We were honoured to speak to you today, and that was lovely. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. <laughs>